Good morning, everybody. As we go to the chitas of today, today is Wednesday, the 17th day of year. We are in the book of Gen of Genesis, the book of Leviticus, Vayikra. We are in the portion of Behar, and we are in chapter 25, verse 25. The Torah, as the Torah tells us, the law of the land of Eretz Yisrael and the way the land of Eretz Yisrael was allowed to be sold or, uh, I, I, you know, to, for the time value, etc., 50 years of jubilee, as we mentioned in the previous two readings. Now the Torah continues. If your brother becomes destitute, he has to sell from his land. So he has to sell his land. He doesn't want to sell his land, but he has to sell his land because he needs the money. And then somebody comes to redeem it. Achazasi means from his inherited land again, because Eretz Yisrael was divided by uh, tribes, and Eretz Yisrael was given to uh, each tribe and the family of the tribe, their part of the land. So the person comes and he needs the land, you know, he, need, he needs the money, so he sells the land from his inheritance. Uvagale and the Redeemer can come, of somebody who's a relative to this person. The Gael. He can come and redeem what his brother has sold. So what is it? So now she says over here, this first teaches us an important lesson. That first was that the person cannot sell his land unless he doesn't have money. He's not allowed to sell the land just for the sake of selling the land. He's only allowed to sell the land if he has no money. And he's poor. Machazosai, from his inheritance, Veloi Kulai. He should never ever sell all his land. He should sell part of his land. He should always leave one field for himself. He can redeem his brother's sale. Any Jew can come and read, because we're all brothers, can come and redeem the land that I sold for because I had no money. The And the one who bought it cannot impede, right? For uh, uh, After two years, as we learned before. <clears throat> so after two years of the sale, and a person can come and redeem his land. Can say, well, you sold to me, to me for 40 years. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but I want, I'm, I'm entitled to get my land back. <speaking in Hebrew> if a man does not have a redeemer, <speaking in Hebrew> but he himself, the seller, Suddenly gains money. He, went, he got into business and he made money. Umatza kidegu lase, and he he has the means to redeem the land. So now she says, "Is there a man of Israel who doesn't have a relative? What is that possible? How is that possible?" So therefore, Rashi says, "We're talking here. Ela girl shiachal ligum. He doesn't have a relative who has the money." Every Jew has a relative, but he doesn't have a relative who has the capability to redeem the land. Really, a, that means really, a, if a person has the capability to redeem the land, he should. But he doesn't have such a person, so therefore he he, he we talk about a situation where he himself can find it. Verse twenty-seven: He shall calculate the years in which the land had been sold. And he should give him the rest. So if he sold the land for 10 years for $100 a year, so he sold it for $1,000, it's after two years, he gives him $800 and he takes back his land. So now she says, the original owner asked the purchaser how many years are left until the Jubilee. He answers such and such, the number of years. The owner continues, if that's so, I'd sell it to you for this amount, such and such amount of money. You should have eventually have returned the field to me in Jubilee. Hence, rather than buying actual land, in fact, you bought it for me in the number of produce yields according to the total of for every year remaining until Jubilee. Now that you have eaten for two or three years or whatever the amount it may be, therefore subtract the value from the total from the original sell price 
and take the remain and take the and take the remainder until Jubilee. And this is the meaning of return the remainder of the purchase price over the crop that he eaten, and he shall give it to the purchaser. Because again, you're not you never sell the land. You're selling the value of the land, what what the what the land gives. So therefore, we said, how do we sell this land? We sold it according to the value of the land. We decided that this land gives a hundred dollars a year, and that's how we sold it. So now you know. So I sold you for ten years till Jubilee. Near ten years is going to be Jubilee. I sold you for a hundred dollars a year. Now, two years later, or three years later, I give you what's left. The man whom this seller, who is coming to redeem it, had sold it. If the, if the first purchaser had sold it to another person for a higher price, the original owner may make may 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 make the above calculation only to the first purchaser to whom he sold the field. Let's say the guy that bought the field for me sold it to somebody else. So I don't that's not my business, but he sold it to somebody else. I can't say, wait a minute, you sold it more money. I want more money. Right? You sold it to somebody else. So you can, no. In essence, I go to evaluate the land from him. I take it from him and he goes to the second purchaser and he evaluates the land, he gets back the money. So if he resold it to another person, if I have money, that's his business. Verse 28. If he can't afford, nobody doesn't have anybody to redeem the land and he can't afford it. Then the, the purchased property stays in the hand of the buyer. Stays until whenever Jubilee comes. The Yotza B'yayvel returns, it goes out in the year of Yevel, the Shav Lachuzase, and it comes back to the owner in the year of Yevel, in the year of Jubilee. So, what's that mean? We know that already. So now she says, this means to tell us, from here we learn that you can't redeem part of the land. You can't say, you know what? I can't afford to buy the whole land back. I'll buy a half of the land that I sold you. No. That is when the buyer can tell the seller, no, either you buy the entire land back or you wait till Jubilee. You wait till we made, we, the deal has been made. At Shasa Yevil, until but not including the jubilee year, and hence the purchaser must not at all enter the jubilee year while in possession of the field, because the jubilee year is released the field from his possession at the very onset of the year. So the guy who buys it cannot say the jubilee year, I'm I'm ending, I'm I'll consider the jubilee year at the end of that jubilee year, and I'll give it to you back at the end of the jubilee year. No, the second the jubilee year starts on Yom Kippur. When they announced the year of Jubilee, that's when the owner, the original owner, the seller, receives his property back. And that completes the Chumash of today. We now start a new chapter, chapter 49 of Tanya. And chapter 49 of Tanya continues. The, the, the whole concept of the Alta Rebbe explained the concept of the tzimtzum and what the Ariza explain the aspect of tzimtzum, the contractions, the aspect of seiver kolalman, the way God encompasses the world, that in essence he encompasses the world in a way because he doesn't want to be revealed within the world, so that the world and creation will not lose its identity, but the creation will continue to be what it is, and that's what the Abish, the God, wanted for the world. Now the Alter Rebbe goes even a step further and he explains concerning Am Yisrael. What does this have to do with us, with this whole thing? This has to do with creation. <clears throat> so now the Rebbe says, <laughs> Even though it's a particular aspect, of the nature of the obscuring and concealment of the fine light of ain't safe of infinite. This whole concept which I explained, which I which I brought to your knowledge. 
in the sense of the world, descending as they, they do ever lower until this material world was created. And numerous of accounts that they divide into many kinds. Out of his known, this is an interesting expression, as is known to those that taste from the tree of life. Those that taste from the tree of life. As we stand in a couple of hours before Lag Boimer, Ilana de Chaya, from the tree of life, the Zoya, the Kabbalah, Chsidis, is called from the tree of life. You can come and taste from the tree of life. After the cloud, Alter Rebbe says, I'll give you in a general, yet in general, I'll give you, and I promised to. Uh, uh, I promised you I would give you a picture, but I will get, we'll find a picture for you this. Um, in general, even though there's many contractions, because we, within each every world there are many contractions, but in general there are three contractions. To three general worlds. And, 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 and in each world, there's many, many more prat and many more particulars. And these are the three worlds. The world of creation, the world of formation, and the world of action. But there's a fourth world, which we already mentioned. The world of Atsilas. So why am I not counting Eilam Atsilas? So good after that, it continues. Ki Eilam Atsilas, because the world of formation, who are Mamish over there, it simply cannot even compare it even as a world. It's over there, totally godliness. Since Atsilas is godliness itself, it is not considered that created exo nilo as the rest of the worlds. But rather, it's called atzilus, which means emanation from the extension of God. That's what we explained previously. There's a concept of emanation, and there's a concept of creation. So thus, like the, the, the ray of the sun emanates from the sun, it does, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, just a natural concept that the sun has its rays. So to Likus has a ray its rays, and then it has its creation. So it's two different things. So the world of Atsilos, the world of emanation is called emanation. That's why it's called emanation, because it emanates. So the vessels over there are very, you know, are like, are like the earth. Then the vessels, and that's what explains it, the vessels in the world of Atsilos is like the light of the world of Atsilos. In, in, in once it comes down into the world of creation, that's where the vessels have its own identity. So the vessels are not like the like the like the, like the earth. The earth creates the vessels. And now you have creation. In the world of, of, of emanation, you have what it says. What? What's Icos? I don't know. I don't know what Icos is. Um, so you have the world of of, uh, of 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 emanation, and then you have the world of creation. Likos. I don't know what Likos is either. So, day livraya oilam habria. So that's an illumination which comes from godliness itself. I'm sorry, I don't I don't know a word Likos or Icos. Icos. They live Raya Ailam Habriya. And to be able to create the world of crea Abriya creation. Shain Sham is a malachas a malachim al yainim, which is the souls. And the and 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 the angels above, right? In Eilam Abriya, we explain in the world of creation, there's the concept, there's where that is the mother, 
the portal or the place where the souls are created, are come from, and they are the soul, also the, the, the world of the, of the angels. Because why are they in the world of creation? Because the service of the world of creation, the focus of the world of creation, Bria, the focus of the world of creation, is the concept of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, which, which, is, which, which enclosed itself in them. So meaning godliness is revealed in them at, in an intellectual manner through the three intellectual faculties of Chachma Bin Andas. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. That's why it's called creation. That's one of the reasons why it's called Olam Habriya, because everything in creation was created through wisdom. Kulam Bechachma Sisa. That's the beginning of creation. The beginning of creation is Chachma. That's why, again, in Olam Habriya, it's called, that's why it's called Olam Habriya. The world of creation. It's called Olam Abriya because over there is focused the world, the concept of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And that's why over there is focused souls. The whole concept of souls, you, even in, in the way your soul comes into your body, your godly soul is in your mind, is in your chachma, is in your wisdom. And therefore, that's Olam Abriya. So now you understand the meaning of the, of the world. So Olam Atzilus. Atzilus means emanation. Because over there, godliness emanates. It's that, there's no vessels almost. There's no vessels. It's dust and emanation. It's a ray of godliness. And that's why Siddhis Kabbalah explains that in that world, godliness is totally united. Yichud, there's a total unity over there. Now you come to the world of creation. Now there is a, there's a greater concept of creation. Even though it's wisdom, where there should be great, there's greater unity than the next world, but over there, it's more of a creation. And they, the souls and the angels, apprehend them and receive influence from them. From Chabad, that illuminates them. And that's where all souls ultimately go back to if they learn Torah. If they learn Torah in this world, that's where they ultimately go back to, the world of creation. Because the more you learn Torah in this world, the more you will reach up to the world uh, after 120 years, to the world of creation. So in order to create the world whose creation are not wholly nullified to God, as is in the case of Atzilos, the world of emanation, but are only capable of knowledge and comprehension. And it's all, and it'll be noted, be noted that the comprehension entails an awareness of one's being in the comprehension proposed as an entity who is comprehending. And that's why it's the beginning of creation, because there is a concept of wisdom. The second you say there's a concept of wisdom, that, and, or, or there's understanding in the wisdom, now there's something that understands. So we have already the ray of creation. That's why everything was created through wisdom because in, in wisdom, there is already the possibility of creation because the, the wisdom is the one, there the, the is a, a separate entity, so to say, wisdom. That's what we learned yesterday. The Ramli Prague said, well, I mean, the God is the knower, the knowledge. The second you say it's the knowledge, then it's, then it, then it's creation. God is above that. It's Kaddish. But the Ramam holds, again, that after, after you have the world of emanation, we have already, in the world of, of emanation, you have Chachma too. You have wisdom too. So since you have wisdom, if you can wait to ask the questions after. So since you have the concept of wisdom, Matilus already, but over there, it's Pashat united in, in the world in the world of, in the world of, of Atzilus, because Atzilus is also after Timtum. But in, in Atzilus is a spacious on the course. In Atzilus is the revelation of God, and it's it's almost impossible to see the wisdom. It's impossible. It's Pashat It's the way God thus reveals Himself. 
and self the revelation of God has within it the concept of Chal. So where does really Tzimtzum start? There, before the world of Bria, the world, the world of creation, that is where you have the strong power of Tzimtzum because now we can we can we can see the uh, we can see the concept of wisdom as an as an identity as a self concept. Keniskalel, as mentioned above, so a mighty contraction was necessary in order to ensure that the light of Godness manifest in Atzilus should be hidden again. Tzimtzum is not from Atzilus. Tzimtzum is from Bria. Again, you have to realize that concept. The hiddenness is not from Atzilus, or for surely from God. The hiddenness is from the world of Bria, that only a contract form of light should illuminate and create creatures of the world of Bria, which are on a level of creation of exonilus. So where do we find, we find even Atzilus, which comes to Eireh, we find like a whole new level, the world of Bria. And so too, it's from the second world to the third world. From the world of Bria to come down to the world of Yitzira. So, in order for the world of Yitzira, a world far lower than Bria, to be created, there needs to again be a powerful contraction. Because even the light of Bria, which is not as strong as Attilas, is far beyond the light that's in Attilas. But the light in Bria is far. Of far greater than the light in Yitzhida. So it's almost like a, like a whole new reality. In comparison to the world of Yitzhida, the world of formation, the light in the world of Bria is too far great for it. So the light of Bria had to undergo a powerful contraction before it was able to descend in the world of Yitzhida. The Ashtabai de Tzimtzum Helen, it's unable to clothe itself, the light of Bria, the light of creation, to be able to clothe itself in the world of formation, with, with, in, in the Kabbalah means the world of emotions. That's where, that's the world of emotion. Now we're going down for the intellect. We're coming down to the world of the, 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 the seven, the six emotions, and that's in the world of Yitzhak. And so too from the world of formation to the world of action. The two has to be a light of the world of Yitzhida. So the, in comparison between the light of the world of Yitzhida, the world of Asiya, to the world, the world of action, to the world of Yitzhida, the world of formation, it's like Ain Saif. The light of Yitzhida is so powerful that to the world of action, it's, it's too powerful. Commercials by Bimakam Acha has elaborated an explanation of these three contractions in a given elsewhere to make them more accessible to our poor intellect. The Kalavos of Lena Dal. Tak, let's go. Dr. Epidus gives you a general concept. Self understood, this is greatly elaborated in many, many different places. But he's not going to go to the elaboration. He's giving you a general principle. Because we really have to know what's the purpose. So thank you very much. And I know how the guy, that, what is the purpose? The purpose is one purpose out of the episode. We have to realize the purpose of this whole thing. What is the purpose of this, which, which is called in Kabbalah, Hishtalshlus. Hishtalshlus Oilemus, the descent of the worlds. We just gave you Hishtalshlus. In a, in a very short period, we explained to you the concept of say the the the, uh, the, uh, the 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 say the the order of the descent of the light of God, the way it comes from infinity, ain't safe to a finite mm-hmm. to the world of action to an extremely and finite entity. What is the purpose? Tachlis kolotzim tzumayla who in the purpose that's what really we might we have we have sichlena adal 
we have poor intellects, so we might never understand this concept to the fullest, but we, will, we need to understand the purpose of this whole thing. The reason of this whole descent is that I should be in this world. And why should I be in this world? That's the whole purpose. The whole purpose of all the Tzimtzumim and all this whole spiritual thing that's brought in Kabbalah and very deep concepts is all for me. And that's why the Mishnah says, Bishviri Li. Every person has to say, Bishviri Li. Because of me, Nivra Elam, the world was created. Because of me. And the truth is, uh, the Balshanta says that this happens every minute. Every minute, this whole thing is happening. Every minute, this whole thing is happening. It's happening in a second. And it's all, I have to know, not, I don't have to know per se how it's happening. I really need to know why it's happening. And why is it happening? For me. It's happening so that I could be who I am and do my Aveda in this world to do my service. To be able to preeminence of light supplanted in darkness. By having light replace darkness. And even more so, when the darkness itself is transformed into light, at that time, the preeminence of the light is felt even in a greater degree. And that's the whole purpose. That is the whole reason. And that's really what I need to know. So the Alter Rebbe that gave us all this thing, he's trying to tell you how great everything is. But really, all this greatness is all waiting for me. Is all waiting for my Avedah to come down into a world, a physical world, which is called a dark world. And it became a dark world because God has hidden himself. Tzimtzumim upon tzimtzumim, contraction upon contraction. Why? So I should reveal the light. I, Zalman Bukit, and every single one of us should go out there, take the responsibility, and reveal this light. Allah saw them nafshali kiss. When a person elevates his divine soul and his verifying soul, the chayunis, right? Just, right? The godly soul and the verifying soul, the, which is ultimately the animalistic soul. The and all its garments. The chol and all the power that's in the body. Kulam la Hashem I should take it all and elevate it to the service of God. As I explained earlier at night. And this is the most important words. Because this is the purpose of the whole thing. This is the purpose of the progressive descent of the world. That's it. So even though these are very Kabbalistic things and these are very hard things and very hard to understand and very hard to comprehend. But you need to comprehend the purpose. And the purpose is all that I and each one of us to elevate this world. So that's what Alter Rebbe said. The Abishta made Ruchnius Gashmius. The God made the concept of spirituality and he brought it into a physicality. And our service is to make physicality into Ruchnius, to take it the opposite way. God came from above to below. And our service is to go from below. From below to above. So the ultimate purpose of the descent from level to level and the world to world is this physical world. That's the most important. It is here that a Jew is able through his divine service to affect the subjugation of evil and the preeminence of light supplanting the darkness. That's the whole purpose. Now the Rebbe now goes on to say that just as God love for the Jews overcame all obstacles that is were stood in the way of creating this physical world. Why would the Abish to go through all these contractions? 
Why did Abish do that to his own? Why would he do that? Why would God do this whole thing? For one reason. And he says it in the Torah. Ahafti eschem amar Hashem. Abish says, I love you. I love you. I am willing to go through this whole thing because I love you. By Yedid Hashem al Hai Sinai. The Abi said, I'm going to come down the mountain. I love you. It's all worth it for me. This whole thing. So they'll be able to create a, because really God could have created a spiritual world. And there'll be the spirituality. What does he need the physical world? Because without the physical world, I wouldn't be here. I, maybe my soul would have been in Ghanaian, but I wouldn't be here as a physical entity, as a self-identified entity. If not that God loved my physical side of me. <clears throat> so I matter very importantly. I do matter. And the proof is I matter because I'm here. And that's proof enough that I matter. Dr. Rebbe now goes on to say, and why, because I matter because God loves me. Just got to overcome the obstacle, Jew, for a Jew, Jews, overcome, I'm sorry. Just, now I said this wrong, Dr. Rebbe goes on to say that just as God, as God loved for the Jews, overcame all obstacles. That is, as he stood in the way of creating this physical world. And we know, actually, the message says that God, it says when before God came to create the world, it says Nasa Hashem, and God said, "Who is he speaking to?" There's a lot of medrashim who he spoke to, the angels, the tzaddikim. The med, the verse says he asked justice, he asked the law, he asked the tzaddik, he asked the din, he asked all the angels of the. And some of them said, "You, you kidding me? Don't create the world." There was a big argument. Should he create the world? Truth, he asked truth, and truth said humans will never be truthful. <coughs> and there was a whole debate, Lamaila, should we create the world? And that's really the truth. So even when the, when, when Mesh, the Magic said when Moses came up to receive the Torah, the Malachah said, Don't give him the Torah. Right? And what did Mesh Labeno answer? God said that's a good question. Why should I give you the Torah? And and Moshe and said, "Wait a minute! You shouldn't steal. It says you shouldn't steal. It says you shouldn't kill. It says you should honor your father and mother." So Moshe Rabbeinu gave them physical mistress that a human being needs to overcome. It's not easy to overcome. He needs to overcome it. So that will that show you that the Abish has wants a Jew brought a Jew down to the world that he should have maybe the capability of stealing, maybe the capability of any negative commandment. And overcome it. Overcome the darkness. So, so therefore, I'm sorry. Going back to the previous statement that I'll be used. As the mirror, as water mirrors the reflection of the face. Right? So is to the heart of man to the heart of man. Just as water reflects exact replica of one's face. So through God, the heart of man to his fellow man. The love of one person to another person results in the other person loving him as well. So if it works to humanity, it should work between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Abish that says, I love you. Not only the Abish that says, I love you. He loves you. He created you. And he continues to create you. God is at work. Kaviyach means the work. He niach v'sila tzadecha. He laid down and set aside, figuratively speaking, right? That a chmashal. Es eir ha'godel abilti tachos. Eivish said, "I'm going to put aside my infinite light." There we see the love of God, the humility of God. He said, I'm going to put aside my infinite light. I'm going to hide it. Why? Because he is the beginning of the He does, and I, I does explain to you. He contracted, he hid it and hid it. God, only God can hide his light. God, 
that hid it himself over and over. Why? Why would he do that? He did this all because he loved you. He loves me. If God would reveal this light in one second, I would disappear. God continues to hide this light. So I should be who I am. That shows you the great humility of God and the love of God to me. Truth is, the Gemara says that we should learn humility and love from God himself. So where do you see the greatness of God? Where do you see that God can come down into a simple matter? So the Abishta comes down within me. God comes down within me because, and he has to, so to say, he has to hide himself. He has to humble himself to be able to come down and uplift me. Come down in within me. La, and, for, and the purpose is la, la, so that I can, I can uplift, uplift myself. This means to say that God created a world in which man may serve him. And by doing so, man is uplifted to God. But how is it possible? How is it possible for love to bring about the contraction when love signifies kindness and expansiveness while contraction and concealment considers severity? So these are two opposites. Al Tareb answers this impl implied question by pointing out that we find that love too can bring about contraction. And that is quoted in the Gemara. The Gemara says, Ava de Chekes Abbas. Love impels the flesh. So the flesh will not impede it. So, Ava de Chekes Abbas. If you have two people that love each other, then it doesn't make a difference how big or small they are, how heavy, because love, if there's true love, there's space for everything. If we have true love, we have space for everything. If we love ourselves, or we want others to love a love, we want us to love like we love, then we don't have space for anybody. We don't have real space for somebody else because really Ava is expansion. But true love is when a person has space for somebody else. He freely speaks and set aside his great light and concealed it through many contracts and so on, this being so. So the Ava, it's not like human beings, the Gemara says that true love brings another person in. True love, there is another place for another person. I, 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 I contract myself and I give space for another person. Allah has come, come, and confined in case. How much more so in an infinite number of times more. Then surely we should put us, we should have such Abba to God that we should put aside everything. Abba. The cheke says Abbas. Love impels. Love brings about the diminishing of flesh. Love brings about the diminishing of space. My space. My space is enough for me and you and everybody else who wants to fit into my space. So too, the Abishta's love to us should create this love of God that we have space for him. We have space, not in somebody else's space, or out of my space. We have space in my space. And there should be no hindrance within the challenges within the challenges without. Not his body. Not his soul. Loy Mammon, not his money. Veloy Ishoba, not even his, his, his nothing. God is above everything. No hindrance. 
whatsoever. Hindrance from without, none of the things should hinder him from cleaving to God. Nothing. Can't use your mother-in-law, your, your wife, your children. It's e that you don't know what, what we don't know what love is to the image. Because with God, there's enough space for everything. That's the beauty of the God, there's enough space to love him and love your wife and love your children and love your, your, your neighbor and love everybody else. Because the Hebrew is for Achbis. The Hebrew is for Shalom. So you can't use God out as an excuse why you don't have Shalom bias, why you don't have family uh, peace, or why you don't have Avis. So you can't use God out as that. And you can't do it the other way either. You can't use your family why you don't have love of God. And now you understand that well. You can understand well. Why we see when it comes to the Shema, we have two brachis. We have two blessings before the Shema in the morning. There are two blessings before the Shema. Two blessings before the Shema starts on uh, starts on page thirty-nine. And the first blessing ends with Yitzit Hamaiyres. That's like a, it's like a long blessing. That's why it's a problem speaking in in between these these these, these parts of the prayer. So, the, so because you're in the middle of a blessing. But over there, it talks about the angels. The first blessing talks about the angels. The second blessing, Avas Elam Haftanu, talks about the love of God to the soul, to every Jew. So to begin with, what does it have to do to begin with? What was the purpose and there are some who write the Kamesh Kosar Ashbab, that they say, what is what is the blessing, the connection to the Shema? The love of Kara is the Kishma. And why did the why do they call it the blessings of Shema? The Lama Tikta of Madafka. And why do they put these blessings before the Shema? Because Al Tareba says, according to I explained right now, you'll understand it perfectly. Because the purpose of Shema is Bechol of Afcha, that I will love the Eivishter. So before we say I love the Eivishter, we say how God loves the world. God loves me. So I have to the purpose of these blessings is to serve the preparation of Shema. The main objective of the Shema is to attain love of God with one's whole inclination. So there's not only divine soul, but the animal soul. Well, of Afcha, he says, I love God with both my hearts. I love God with my godly soul, and I love God even with my animalistic soul. So that not only the divine soul, but the animal soul, the Yetzirah, also comes to love God. And from this, one must first meditate on the content of the blessing of the Shema, which is sky the self nullification of angels and other creatures. Thus, the blessing preceding Shema are indeed similar to other blessings. Just as the sage and student blessings to recite before performing any other particular mitzvah in order to make a person fit, receptacle for the benediction, benefication flow by receiving from, from its performance. So too did they institute the blessing preceding Shema in order for one to properly perform the mitzvah of Shema. So the Alter Rebbe, we just explain the Shum Shikke Kishma, the most the essence of the Shema, of the recital of Shema, is Lekayim Becholavav. Is that I should what we say? The Haf Teshem Lekecha, I love God Becholavav. Levavcha is plural. Oops, Levavcha is plural. And what's the purpose of this plural world with both my hearts? So the Gemara says. With both my inclinations. 
I love God. I know that I have a nefesh and a kiss. I know I have a godly soul. And I know I have an animistic soul. But I love God with both of them. The Jew should love God with his whole heart, even with his animal soul and his evil inclination. How does one do that? How does one serve God with his animal soul? I don't love me, negil that and the way you do that is to withstand your animalistic soul. Whatever your animalistic soul, for the outside, for the inside, nothing stands before the love of God. Nothing is a hindrance to the love of God. And that's why Bakalabha. Dr. Rebbe wants you to, to emphasize this. Nifa that Dr. Rebbe uses a shocking thing. Even your wife and children. Nobody should use their wife and children as a reason why they don't love God. It has nothing to do with it. If you truly loved your wife and children, your children would love you to, 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 to love God because they want to love God too. So nothing. Don't use out any excuse. There is no excuse when it comes to the love of God. Heine Ishevel there that al Rebbe says, what are you truly connected to in your heart? Naturally, you love your wife and children. Everybody loves their wife and their children. Everybody loves their family. Should the family become before the Abishter? Is it a competition, really, between your family and God? There's no competition. There's no competition both ways, I'm saying. There's no competition with your family and God that you should love God and love your family. And, the, and there's no competition either both ways either. You should love your family and you should love God. As our sages said, God spoke and it came to pass. This refers to one's wife. He commanded and it stood fast. That refers to his children. Meaning, it is God's command that abuse man's nature, the bond of his wife and his children. The Abish to men, why are you natural? Why am I naturally love my wife and my children? It's because that's the Abish to made that, that, that creation. The Abish to gave me that feeling. Thank God that I love my family differently than I love other people. These are your heart, these things in which your heart is bound. And they're not a hindrance to divine service. They have nothing. They, if the Abishta made it that way, that the Abishta didn't make it, that it should be a hindrance to the love that he loves us or that we love him. So if you understand the Chol of Avcha, really, because you think about the Chol of Avcha, why would you go the other way? But according to this, According to the Alter Rebbe explains this. That's why it goes that way. Bechol Avavcha is the highest thing. We always think Bechol Nachomedecha. Everything you have is the high, the hardest thing. The hardest thing is Bechol Avavcha, according to this interpretation. Bechol Avavcha means with everything that your heart, your heart naturally has love to, is not a hindrance to my service to God. I love the Abishta. Nothing changes. Not even a natural love changes my love to God. That's love. Then bechol nafshecha with all my soul. Then bechol meidecha with all my money, whatever, all my money. Money is not a hindrance to me. So that's true love. How do I create this true love? Is the two blessings where I talk about God's love. So I understand that God's love to the world and to me. God has an unbelievable ava, unbelievable love to me that awakens up my love to God. I love God. So thus like God is willing to bring to you, so to say, to, to humble himself. Kaviyaho, so to say. To humble himself and to can do all these contractions and to hide himself. And then to come into the world of angels, into the world of, 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 of even angels that create animalistic stuff, and, the, and ultimately me. That should awaken up. That's the brachas. That's the blessings before the Shema. And now I can say the Shema, which professes, and a statement, and my statement, that I love God. And my love to God 
is it is a, a such a powerful love that there is no hindrance there is no challenge to my love of god there is no challenge not inner challenges not out of challenges there is no challenge there's no challenge of god's love to me and there's no challenge of my love to god i could no challenge there's no competition i have no competition God doesn't have a competition. God does have a competition for his love to me. And if there is a competition, God ignores it, puts it aside, so to say, so too, I love God. And there is no competition between my love of God and me. I am willing to put everything on the side for my love of God. And that's what we say in, in the prayer of Shema. Hakol b'shvil avas Hashem. All renounced for the love of God. Thus neither the things found within, the animal soul, the evil inclination, nor those things that are found without. Without your wife, my wife, my children, my sustenance. Nothing stops that love. I can still love the Abishta with the way I love, should love God, and those things should not be a hindrance to God. It shouldn't hinder a person from these matters which leads to the love of God. What a powerful, powerful teaching of the Alta Rebbe. Today, that all the concepts of this whole concept of, of the whole knowledge of symptom and all these things is really, don't get lost into that. Realize what the purpose of this whole thing is that I should awaken up a love of God within me. That's the whole purpose, which connects me to God, elevates me, brings about an elevation to the world, brings, it, it, it reveals a dark world to light. It, uh, that concept, that love that I have the, to the Abishta creates a whole revelation in the world and in myself that I couldn't do if not that God loved me and put me in the situation, put me in a body and gave in a physical world and gave me that opportunity. So that completes the Tanya of today. Today is the 17th day of the month, which is chapter 83, 84, 85, 86, and 87. If you say these three chapters, these are five chapters, I'm sorry, 83 to 87, you would do the chitas of the day. I want to just mention that in Mid Shem tonight is Lag Ba'ima. And uh, we are having at Chabad a bonfire, the Simcha session, to celebrate the Simcha of this learning. What we learned today is all comes from the Zaya. This, uh, this is all revelations of the Zaya. So we are going to come to celebrate the Simcha of Shimon Bayechai, to celebrate in his joy tonight at 8 30. Everybody's welcome, men, women, and children. We're going to have a music, live music a bonfire, food, drinks, and come and celebrate. And now the Rebbe was self-understood. He said, the Rabbi Shimon Be'echoi can take us, can die, lismet al Rabbi Shimon Be'echoi b'shasat chak. The Gemara says, it is worthy, worth it, to, to rely on Rabbi Shimon Be'echoi in a time of need. So you can come tonight and rely on Rabbi Shimon Be'echoi b'shasat in his joy, and Rabbi Shimon Be'echoi will take us out of all our needs. And I want to invite you all tonight at 8.30 to the Chabad parking lot. Everybody's invited. Come and celebrate the joy of Hashem Echoy for as long as you want to stay. And let us all be happy with the teachings of Rabbi Hashem Echoy. And the Mitshem, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. We'll continue to learn the Chitas of the day. Have a great day.